Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Justin Davis from Drone Camps, and we're gonna go over this new HDLRC. This is the F4 V5. Version five is finally here, and it seems like they have a new version about every three months online. Um, I think these are available in shipping, but I'm gonna use this new V5 all-in-one flight controller on my ULX over there. I'm gonna make it a short stack, and I'm gonna add some bullet ESCs out here on the arms uh, with these 2306s. I'm gonna use 30 amp ESCs in conjunction with this flight controller. So I'm super excited to have this because it has everything on this stack that'll make it nice and short on this ULX and uh, shorten up the stack quite a bit. It also comes with a beeper and a built-in VTX, which is switchable between 25, 200, and 600. So very, very nice. I can do that right there on the board. I can also turn the VTX on and off from this board. So really, really nice. It has a little QR code here you can scan with your phone to go straight to the manual. And I also appreciate them putting that on there. But let's go ahead and open up the box. We'll do a weigh in as well. And I'll show you some of the closer up features of this little board. Really nice looking board right out of the box. Now you're looking at the very top of this V5 and you have a little arrow up here, of course, facing the direction that you're going to be flying. Uh, and, and right away we see that it does have a numeric display right here for LED, which is telling you which band you're on and also what channel you're on. So if you long press, you get to change the band. You can do race band as well on this one. So that's nice. It's also running on 5.8, which is pretty standard, five bands and 40 channels on this VTX. And then you also have a spot down here for your antenna. It includes a cable in the box that you can run off. It has an RP SMA connector on there. So you'll need a female adapter to go with that if you're looking to order something or a converter or a specific antenna to fit this board. Uh, now you do have that F4 chip right here. And you also have OSD on here built into this, which is super nice. You can go and tune that. It's also a minimum OSD on here. Uh, you also have ESC tabs right here. And over on the side, these little tiny holes right here, those are your signal. You can see they're labeled S1, S2, S3, and S4. And it's nice because they have this set up the way that it's set up in Betaflight, it's going to work on your quad. It's not flipped around. You don't have motor one signal wire up here. Uh, some of this flight controllers out there have that problem. Then you have to turn the board or whatever, uh, or switch around a signal wire just to make sure that your motors are in order. But this one is all ready to go. Uh, over here on the right hand side, you have the USB port for hooking up to Betaflight. Very simply just plug in your cable, but you don't get one included with it. So you have to provide your own. Now up top here, this little gold button, that is your boot button. So if you couldn't connect to Betaflight for some reason, you hold down this button and you can flash the firmware on here. So you can load the firmware in Betaflight while holding that down, connect your cable and it will reflash. Uh, once you reflash though, keep in mind it does reset all of your modes and settings. Any of your PIDs that were on there, it sets everything back to the default, but you'd be able to access your board again. Now, if you look over here on this side, you see a little tiny button there and you wanna be careful with these buttons because they do come off quite easily. Other boards I've had that have these little tiny buttons, I had one come unsoldered. So you wanna be extra specially careful with this button, but this is gonna change your channels here and your bands. So if you hold that button down, long press it, you'll be able to change bands, short press it, and you'll be able to change channels one through eight on each band. Now also guys, right here, if you hold down this button for longer than two seconds, you'll see these two little LEDs change colors right here. And it will give you a readout in the manual. It shows you which power, VTX power you're working on, if you're working on 25, 200, or 600. So if two LEDs are lit up right here, you have 25 milliwatt. And if you have one LED right here, you have 200 milliwatt. If you have no LEDs, you're running 600 milliwatts. So pretty simple little schematic in the manual. Okay, let's take a look at the bottom and what we have underneath here. On the very bottom in the very front of the board, if you're looking at it from this little arrow right here, just flip it right over there. This is where your camera is going to come off of. You're going to run your LEDs off of here as well if you want to. And you also have RX1 and TX1 over here on the far side of this little port. Over here, then this port right here is where you're going to connect your receiver. And you can do anything on this one. You can do Spectrum DSMX, you can do PPM, you can also do S bus receivers. So it accepts a variety of receivers. Uh, I'm not 100% sure if it does iBus, but I think I saw somewhere out there that it does accept iBus for the FlySky guy, so that's pretty nice. And down here at the very bottom, let me get this just a little bit closer in focus here. Um, this little port down here actually is for 
your buzzer over on the far left hand side you have five volt power and ground right next to it and the next pins all the way over are tx3 rx3 tx6 rx6 s6 and rssi on the far port side now i'm not sure if you guys noticed but everything on here is labeled extremely well all the printing on the board on the pcb itself is extremely clean i can read everything on here without glasses uh, and some of you guys that have a hard time telling what is printed on your boards i understand you i feel you i'm with you um, some of the printing on some of these boards are extremely hard to read and they get muddy after they've been printed so Nice also that they put signal on the very top. So they have these labeled, each of these signal ports are labeled on the top and the bottom. So sometimes when I'm putting my signal wires in, I have to flip the board over and, and look. Uh, but they actually have it on the bottom and the top. So if you decide to put your signal and wire in from the bottom or the top, either way you do it, it's labeled and easy to see. So that's really nice that they did that for us. Now those of you who like to use black box data recording, it does have 16 megabytes of onboard storage, uh, flash storage for your data. That's pretty nice. It doesn't have the micro USB port on here like some of them do for the micro SD card to slide into. Uh, that would be nice, but there's no room left on this board. There is a ton of stuff on here. Now let's just go ahead and take it by itself and put it on the scale and see what we get. It's 13.8 grams. Not too bad. It's a little on the heavy side for some other flight controllers out there, but this is packing a lot of stuff on there, so I was kind of expected to be above 10 grams. And I'm just gonna set this to the side real quick and show you what else is in the box. You get your VTX cable here, and that simply plugs into the top of the board and that little post at the very back of your controller. Go ahead and take that out. And this side plugs in here, just like this. You just push it and snap it down. It snaps into place. It's pretty easy to install. And then you can run this wire up and mount it. It also has mounting hardware on there, so you can just put it through the hole in your frame and turn this little screw down. It also has a nice little washer below it, above it and below it, so you can have it nicely tight on your frame. It won't move around. Now you also get an XT60 on here, which would mount either in the vertical position facing down or vertical position facing up, depending on your setup. Now what I would probably do is snip one of these off, make it a little bit shorter, and just use a little bit of flexible cable here instead of hard mounting this straight to it because in the past I've seen these actually break the PCB off of the flight controller just break this in half uh, in a bad crash when those 4s batteries fly off they have a lot of force so I would recommend just cutting one of these a little bit short and running it off the bottom like that uh, and soldering it directly to this just use a, a lot a liberal amount of solder on there and you will need an antenna with this type of connector on here. Let's see if I can get it a little bit closer for you. See how that's a female version. Just screws right down. And this is the way that your antenna hooks up to this system. Now also in the box you have a few variety of receiver cables in here. You've got something for PWM. Uh, those of you guys that want to use this one, you can with those style receivers. That's pretty nice. And you have PPM and SBUS cables as well. If you're using SBUS, you don't need to use all of these cables. You can just simply snip them off at the base or you can remove them. I usually take a little razor blade and just pull these teeth back and, and pull the wires out that I don't need. But they give you two of these, so that's nice. You also get a bit of hardware to mount your flight controller, your all-in-one flight controller, right to your board. So I'm going to be using these on my ULX that I have sitting over there. And last but not least, you get a buzzer in the box, which is really Really nice because I haven't seen a lot of flight controllers offer an additional buzzer. So overall I'm pretty happy with this board so far. I like the features that they put on here and this is the version 5 so we're finally starting to get to the point where they might want to consider doing that all in one including the ESCs and everything on here. It's going to be a little bit larger. It's going to hang out a little bit longer but I think that's the version 6 maybe coming soon from HGL Tech uh, otherwise known as HGL RC. But so far I think this is going to be sweet for simplifying the build. Price is not too bad for this all-in-one. It's around $59 at the current making of this video. So if you want to check out that link, you can below. I'm going to use this one for mine and uh, definitely going to enjoy it. So thanks again for watching, you guys. I am Justin Davis. I'll see you on the next one.